Hello everyone and welcome to Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kisslin, joined today by Dr. James Diem, who you all have grown to know and love. It's been with our practice a couple years now. Uh, we're coming to you from our Hazelton location here on the Beltway in Hazelton. And as always, if there's any questions, please feel free to contact our office. Our phone number here is 570-453-2020. And if you're watching us from the Poconos and in our Stroudsburg area, uh, our Stroudsburg office, Stroudsburg Eye Specialist, located at 852 North 9th Street in Stroudsburg. And our phone number there, 570-421-3342. And as always, you can check out our website, www.drkisslin.com. You can uh, check out anything we talk about there. You can also email uh, the office, um, schedule an appointment, lots of cool stuff on our, on our uh, website. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, something that affects uh, over 3 million people in the United States, and that is glaucoma. So first of all, Dr. Diem, uh, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having um, me. You know, glaucoma... You know, what, what I thought we would do with this show is, is get down to some basics. You know, the last couple of shows we've done have been really kind of uh, some new technology. We've really talked about some new things we're doing in the office. But, you know, you and I discussed possibly getting back to some basics, some, some things that we see a lot of patients coming in with now. Uh, and just to give the folks an idea out there, we're going to do um, a set of three shows. And this is going to be the first of a series of three. And we're going to talk about glaucoma today. And uh, you know, we see a lot of patients coming in now with glaucoma, and really they don't know what it is. Uh, they're on drops. They don't know why they're taking them. We don't feel they've really maybe been educated in the past by some other providers. Um, and we thought we'd take a step back and go over this. So why don't you tell the folks out there you know, what we're talking about here. What is glaucoma? Yeah, so glaucoma is a, a really um, very interesting condition. It's uh, often referred to as the silent thief of sight because the patient doesn't know they have it, doesn't hurt, and it often doesn't cause any visual changes until the very end stage. Uh, I think most people will refer to it as a condition that uh, has to do with their eye pressure, right? So how many times have you seen a patient come in and say, am I getting the glaucoma test or the eye puff test? And right. Just for everybody's knowledge, uh, we're, we're sort of beyond that here at uh, Hazleton and Stroudsburg Eye Specialists. We have a, more of an advanced technology, so we don't do the eye puff test. Right. And, and really, you know, glaucoma, what I tell patients is it's kind of like a puzzle. Um, it's not just about pressure, because you can have high eye pressure and not have glaucoma. So you important. can have low eye pressure and have glaucoma. Right. So, you know, we now have, you know, and I'm kind of proud to say we probably have more gadgets and gizmos than anybody else That's um, a fact. In, in three states. We have, we um, have the most, absolutely. We have, we have the most technology. And, you know, what that helps us do is piece this puzzle together right. um, about glaucoma. So what are some of those pieces that we're Put yeah. together. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, the first most obvious thing is the eye pressure. Right. We want to get the eye pressure and discuss it with the patient and have that conversation like you just mentioned. Just because it's high doesn't mean you have it. Just because it's low doesn't mean you don't have it. Uh, so we find the eye pressure and talk to the patient about that. Normal eye pressure, just so everyone knows, is somewhere between 12 and 21. Okay, and then there's sort of a gray area, uh, higher eye pressure that we refer to people as ocular hypertensive, usually between 21 and 26, okay? Um, so, so we discuss that with them, we discuss their eye pressure. The next really important thing, and I think this is the most important thing, I always spend a lot of time on this, is the optic nerve. And I just wanna take a second to, to uh, look at the um, eye, uh, uh, model here. This is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is what connects the eyeball to your brain. So unbelievably important. And really glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve. And so we have a wonderful technology here called Optos, uh, which takes a picture of the back of the eye and we're actually able to, to show the patient what the optic nerve looks like. So when you talk to the patient about um, their optic nerve, what kind of things are you telling them? So there's the, the one thing I, I'll say is, is your optic nerve is almost like a, um, a computer cord. Mo okay. Most patients have computers now. And they, like or, or a cable cord, okay. you know, the, the yeah. cable that comes into your house and plugs into the back of the TV. And it's got an outer insulation, insulation and then you've got the inner kind of microfiber. So if you look at this optic nerve here, the whitish outside part here is the insulation and then inside are the kind of microfibers. And those microfibers are what sends that message, like you said, to the brain and allows us to see. And then that message gets processed, goes back and to other parts of the body and kind of tells us what to do. So in glaucoma, 
that pressure, whether it's high or low for that patient, statistically whatever it is, starts to kind of eat away um, or damage that outer insulation. And if it gets down into the microfibers, that's when you can start to, to lose vision. So that's kind of the, the analogy I use. And I think, you know, we're going to show a picture right now of a, a normal optic nerve and, you know, what it looks like. And basically you can see here in the normal optic nerve picture how the uh, size of the white part in the middle uh, is very small. And then you can see in the, the picture of the glaucoma uh, optic nerve, how the size of the white part in the center is much larger. And that shows us that there's been damage over time. So that's the second thing we look at is the size of the optic nerve. And, and the other analogy I'll use, because I kind of like food, um, as I know you do, Me too. Um, <laughs> is, you know, if you think of if you, um, let's say you go in the summer to go get ice cream, okay. and they have a big three gallon or five gallon container of ice cream, and you start to scoop out the center of that ice cream container. Um, as it gets more scooped out, that's what the optic nerve looks like. In that picture we showed, you can actually see that inner part almost looks like someone took a big scooper and just scooped out the center. Right. So the more scooped out that optic nerve is, um, that's the sign in most cases of, of more damage. And we're going to get into the, in the next segment a little bit about some more testing. But I think you're right, the, the pressure um, is, is one big thing, and then that um, taking the picture to really Huge. see what the optic nerve looks like really guides us as far as what we're going to do next. Um, and it gets to be a very detailed discussion at Absolutely. this point because, it's again, it's not just about pressure. Right. It's just not about only what the optic nerve, nerve looks like. And this can be really uh, confusing uh, with patients. Um, how many patients a day do you think you see that that have glaucoma? You know, I, I think uh, we have a tremendous uh, and growing glaucoma population in our area here. Um, and so, you know, I think on any given day, I may see three to five glaucoma patients that have been diagnosed with glaucoma or diagnosed or, or suspicious for glaucoma, which is a big catchphrase that we'll use. And that is, you know, sort of where they're on the borderline, we're not sure yet. We're still putting those pieces together. Um, I know your practice is, you have a large glaucoma practice here. You may even see more than that. So um, well, I'm a little older than you. So, well, hey, you know, they, they I say, didn't say it. They, <laughs> they say that as doctors get older, their patients, uh, their patient base gets older too, and I think that's what we're seeing. Is probably why I see uh, uh, more glaucoma patients. But uh, uh, we're just about ready to take a quick break here. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk more about technology. We're going to talk more about glaucoma, how we diagnose it, and then we're going to talk uh, in our last segment about how we treat it. So. Uh, please uh, come back with us on the other side of this break. Again, you're watching Eye Care Today, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kisselin, joined uh, uh, today by Dr. James Diem, who you've all grown to know and love again uh, here in Hazleton and, and Stroudsburg. And uh, we're coming to you from our Hazleton location, Hazleton Eye Specialist on the Beltway in Hazleton. Uh, as always, any questions, 570-453-2020. In Stroudsburg, 570-421-3342. Catch us on the web at www.drkisselin.com. If there's any questions, comments, suggestions for shows, anything like that, please feel free to reach out. We are here for you. Uh, Dr. Diem, last segment. We got into glaucoma. Uh, you called it the silent thief in the night of your vision, which I think is a yep. great, great analogy. Um, which you know, I just want to backtrack a little bit. And I was just kind of thinking in the last segment, and, and you know, we had to end. But you know, a lot of patients will come in and say, you know, I'm 45, I see well, I only need reading glasses. Why the heck do I need to get my eyes examined? Sure. Um, because they feel like they, they don't need glasses. So. You know, for me, this is where we have this gap in society between maybe 45-ish and 65, where patients will go 5, 10, 15 years without seeing the eye doctor. Yeah. Why is that bad? You know, I mean, there's just a, there's just a tremendous uh, amount of things that can be occurring in the eye uh, that we don't know about, that we can't feel or see or have any understanding as to whether or not they're going on. Um, you know, it's a, this uh, glaucoma is the second leading cause of vision loss in, in the world. Um, and the reason that is for the, the majority of those individuals is because they have no clue that they have it. And there's just an unbelievable amount of things that can be going on in the eye. One is uh, another one unrelated to glaucoma, although there is a connection 
connection um, is diabetes, right? And we talked about that many times. And but there's many signs. There's, there's many times I know that you and I are the first ones to uh, let somebody know that they're at risk for diabetes, high blood pressure, heart problems, cholesterol, um, all of which can uh, increase your risk of glaucoma. Right. And you know, with diabetes, though, you know, a lot of patients they'll find themselves peeing a lot at night. They're losing weight, even though they're eating more. So there right. are some signs some and signs, symptoms that yeah. are going on. But glaucoma, there's nothing. nothing. There's nothing. So you know, I've seen these patients, 55 years old, come in and say, you know what? I've been hitting the curb a lot when I when I pick my daughter up at school right. on the one side. You know, why am I, you know, I need glasses because I don't see as good on the right. And we do all this stuff and they've really lost half their vision in one eye already. Right. So, you know, you know, this is, I, I think the point we want to make, and again, we said we want to get back to basics a little bit with, with uh, some things we talk about here. It's very important to get your eyes examined, even if you feel like you see well, because the health of the eyes is something that, you know, I think um, patients think there's nothing wrong with, even though they don't need glasses. So, um, and really to know that, you know, we go the extra mile as far as taking care of the health of the eyes. You know, I mean, um, lots of healthcare and eye care providers out there, but again, we're, we're really on the cutting edge of glaucoma care and treatment here in this office. And the big thing, you know, you, you discuss people walking into curves and things like that. Um, a lot of times in our 40s, uh, this is a condition that happens very slowly over many, 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 many years. And that's another reason why patients don't notice because that, that change in their vision, which is usually their peripheral vision, and happens very slowly over many years. So maybe pa patient will come in in 40 and it's only the beginning part. And the big catchphrase in medicine right now is preventative medicine, right? right. Preventative medicine. So that's the point where we want to do something before they get to the point where you are talking about running into things and bumping into things. And that conversation is very difficult, honestly, because a lot of times they'll have a, a young, healthy guy, for instance, who, like you said, hasn't gone to a, any healthcare provider in many years and came in because, oh my God, I can't read anymore so I got to do something um, and I'm telling them they're at risk for glaucoma and they're looking at me looking at me like I have 25 heads they're thinking I'm making something up but you know again it's painless you're not noticing anything and a lot of times people pride themselves on excellent peripheral vision right. you know and so they're like what are you talking about I didn't lose any peripheral vision and they haven't but once it's gone it's gone or or sometimes they have in one eye but you don't right. notice it because your other eye picks that up. Right. You know, right. Yeah, good God point. was smart. He gave us two eyes for a reason. Right. But you know, a lot of patients just don't realize what they're missing. And right. you know, so again, the, the point I want to make is, you know, we have a great optical here. You know, we have two thousand frames on the board to pick from. But right. you know, the glasses part of an eye exam now for me is like ten percent of smart. of yeah. of what we do. It's not about just glasses anymore. And it's the easy part in truth, right? right. This is really where being a doctor gets fun. You right. know, this is where we get to put the, like you said, put the pieces of the puzzle together and figure it out. Right. So, so um, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> and, and, uh, well, um, so if you're out there and haven't seen an eye doctor in a while, please get, get checked and, and go see the eye doctor. Um, so anyway, uh, when we get back to glaucoma, we talked about checking the pressure is part of the piece of the puzzle. Right. Uh, we talked about what the optic nerve looks like. But we got to talk about how the optic nerve functions. Sure. Um, so how do we check how the optic nerve functions? You know, the, the gold standard for optic nerve function is visual field testing, okay? So visual field testing is um, done in several different fashions. The most uh, uh, archaic form is simply placing fingers and, and moving your hands out in the periphery of one's visual field and seeing if they could uh, see those things. We'll pick up on vis big visual field cuts by doing that. Um, but the gold standard is um, through a, a Humphrey visual field system, uh, which we have here in the office. Which all patients hate. They, they hate they it. They hate it. And, you know, they go, oh, I got to do the visual field. The button now, test. It's one where you press the button oh, and you see the light. I know patients it. hate it. And if you're out there and I've made you watching and I've made you do and I apologize. But We're it is, sorry. It is the gold standard. <laughs> um, so we do have to do that every 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 so often because, like you said, it, it, it will pick up finer visual field defects uh, in, in the vision. And I think, you know, we're going to put up a picture here of what a visual field loss looks like. And you'll see there's these little dots, and these little dots show when we see, when the patient sees the light and when they don't see the light. And very simply, you know, the light is placed in different parts of your visual field. You're looking straight ahead. You click the button when you see it. And it tells us, you know, how, how your retina is working and how your peripheral vision is working. Um, the important thing I think patients should know about the, the visual field test is that um, you need to do it a couple times. There's a learning curve, right? You don't get it. You don't always get it right on the first time. So we got We have to repeat that to look for the number one thing is repeatability. Is there a loss repeatable? 
So, and, and you know, where, where visual fields are, are good, they do have their problems, like you said. So there's another instrument now called an OCT, which can actually pick up damage to the optic nerve a couple years earlier than we actually see it on a visual field. So explain to the folks out there what an OCT is. So we always talk again about the optic nerve and what it looks like and we can see a two-dimensional image of that and we'll put that picture up again of what the optic nerve looks like but we don't know how thick it is okay and so what the OCT does it actually shows us how thick it is and that's a big part of glaucoma and the damage that's under the optic nerve is is it thinning. So you can see here in this picture of an OCT printout how the yellow and red is denoting thinning in areas on the optic nerve. So that's, a, that's definitely a part of every glaucoma workup here at the office. So all of these pieces of the puzzle that we're talking about, we've talked about um, eye pressure, we've talked about how the optic nerve looks, we've talked about how the optic nerve functions on a couple different levels. All of these things are extremely important. We're going to talk about one other um, piece of technology which we're proud to be the only ones um, in a large area to have um, as far as uh, diagnosing and monitoring glaucoma. Uh, we're going to talk about this in the next segment. So we're going to take a quick break. Again, you're watching Eye Care Today and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kisslin, joined by Dr. James Diem. You're uh, uh, watching us today. Uh, we're coming to you from our Hazleton location, Hazleton Eye Specialist on the Beltway in Hazleton, 570-453-2020. If you're watching us from Stroudsburg, uh, Stroudsburg Eye Specialist is our location out there, 570-421-3342. As always, check us out on the web, www.drkisslin.com. So, uh, went through a lot in the last two segments about glaucoma. Uh, three million people in the United States suffer from glaucoma, like we said. Um, the silent thief in the night uh, stealing your vision. Uh, lots of pieces to put together when you diagnose glaucoma. It's not just about eye pressure. Right. Uh, we've talked about a lot of the testing that we do in this office to help diagnose glaucoma. Again, we said you know, that we're proud to be probably the only facility in the area, uh, including up in the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, uh, Danville area to have a lot of this technology. Um, so, you know, diagnosing glaucoma takes a lot. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to these puzzles. Uh, there's one other piece that's very interesting, and I'm going to kind of introduce it, and I'm going to let you talk a little bit more sure. about it. Um, it's called an ERG VEP, and I'll let you explain what those um, uh, letters mean, but the way I explain this test to patients, and, and then you can weigh in on how you do it, is when you go to your family doctor and they want to look at your heart, they put electrodes on your chest and they measure the electrical output of your heart. Uh, very important. Well, now we can measure the electrical impulse of the eye and how fast the electrical signal goes from the eye to the brain and back. And that's what this technology in a nutshell does. So if you could kind of just uh, go a little bit more into that. Yeah, so I, I really like that analogy. Actually, I'm going to start using it. Oh. I wish you would have told me that right. earlier, because <laughs> I love I that analogy. You that when yeah, you were that, intern? That's fantastic. <laughs> I really like that analogy. That I think patients really could uh, uh, identify with that. But yeah, so electroretinogram, okay? Electroretinogram or ERG is an evaluation of the electrical output of the retina. So we put some electrodes on the front of the face, and basically we we shine a bright pattern on this screen right here. And what that pattern does is it, it, it generates an electrical current by the eye. The eye is an electrical producing unit and it speaks to the brain through an electrical impulse. And just so the folks know, we're, we don't have the machine on. It takes a lot to boot up the machine and, and get it going. So we usually only do that during patient care hours. Right. So you don't see anything on the screen right now, but sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, so, so that's what happens. And so we give a stimulus of a known size and shape and we expect to get a response of a known size and shape. So you'll so kinda see- like if, if if I pinch you, yeah, I'm you're going to have a response. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing in the eye. A visual um, stimulus should cause a response. That's right. And so we're able to see a, a, um, 
a, a, a sine curve. A, a curve, exactly. And uh, I have some on this page here, and we'll put some up on the screen of what that looks like. Um, but if, if someone has glaucoma, then that curve is going to be reduced, both in, in size and in the amount of time it takes to get that response back. Um, so, you know, the neat thing about this, the neat thing about this test is before we only had one way that we can test function of somebody's eye. That was the visual field machine. That everybody hates. Everybody hates it. Everybody. So, so we did this for you to, <laughs> <laughs> to, because we know you hate the visual field test. I'm sorry, you're still going to have to do it, but this is going to give us a really important objective, meaning it doesn't require your response. Your uh, response has nothing to do with the effectiveness of the output of this test. And so um, it gives us a functional number, how your eye is working um, without you responding, which is so huge. So it really revolutionized the way that we look at glaucoma. Because like you said in the last segment, the visual field test does require the patient to kind of be paying attention. Right. They can't be sleeping. You have to press the button every time you see the light. If a patient's response time isn't quick, if they're a little slower pressing the button, sometimes that can affect the test. So, you know, there, there are some problems with the visual field, but like you said, this is a great way that we can um, check someone's function as far as their vision without and them earlier to, and, it, and it picks up and changes a, a lot earlier and you know it is covered by insurance which is which is a nice thing and again we're proud to be one of the only facilities and it doesn't take long to do either a patient no. does it it's 30 seconds uh, in front of the machine that it actually takes the the setup is the a setup little bit is, longer right. five minutes ten it minutes doesn't hurt these little tiny electrodes just sit around the eye yeah and it doesn't hurt at all right um, so you know it's it's really a great uh, test to have have at our disposal and um, you know if, if you are a patient or do come here as a patient this is something that we will be doing um, you know with the last couple of minutes we have left in this show and I can't believe it, it went so fast uh, talking about glaucoma you know if we diagnose someone with glaucoma it's not the end of the world uh, that's right it doesn't mean you're going blind and a lot of patients get really upset you know oh my gosh you told me I have glaucoma I'm gonna go blind you know, nowadays what I tell patients is in 99% of the cases, um, if a patient does what we tell them to do and we do what we're supposed to do, you really shouldn't go blind anymore. Right. The treatments out there are so good now for glaucoma. And the number one treatment now for glaucoma is what? Drops. Drops. Very simple. Very simple. You take a drop. You put you a know? drop in the eye, right. And usually that drop. Eye. Not in the mouth. Not in the mouth or in the, the ear. Okay, in the eye. <laughs> usually uh, the drop too is once a day. Once a day at night. That technology has come so far. When, when I was in school many years ago, um, we used to have these drops you had to take four times a day, six times a day. They had a lot of side effects. But like you said, now the drops are really pretty simple. It's yeah. just usually once a day before you go to bed. Does a great job of lowering the eye pressure. And sometimes we do have to add medication to that. So maybe there's another drop they may have to do in the morning. But again, it all comes down to using like you said, all the tests we have at our disposal to see now how these drops are working. Right. Is the disease not progressing anymore? Right, and I think, you know, the drops, um, again, you know, I think this is part of the reason why people get so mixed up with glaucoma and eye pressure being the only thing that's important. You know, at this point, as far as treatment for glaucoma, all of our treatments are aimed at lowering the eye pressure. You know, so that'll be the game that we get into then when we see you uh, after we decide to start treatment is, what's your eye pressure now? Usually we're looking to lower it by 20 to 30 percent with a drop, you know, and so, you know, if you're in the, if you're 22 or something like that, oftentimes we want you below 16, you know, so that's the game we'll play when we talk and, and discuss, you know, what kind of drops are working, what drops aren't. There are some surgical uh, treatments for glaucoma, too. And, you know, the, the other thing I tell patients not to get really caught up on, you know, glaucoma is a disease of time. Right. It doesn't go bad very quickly. Right. Um, so, you know, if someone's pressure, if they come in and their pressure's a little high at that visit, even though they're on drops, I'll say, listen, let's just check it next time. Right. Nothing's gonna go really bad overnight. You know, so we have some time to deal with this and do these tests and, and sit down and put all these pieces together. So, um, you know, as, as we wrap it up here, um, we went through a lot of information and that's why, you know, we put our website up on the screen, we put our phone numbers up on the screen. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you're out there and haven't had your eyes examined, please give the office a call and come in and get your eyes checked because you may have glaucoma. It's something we can detect early now. It's something that can be treated very easily. Uh, we're here to help you um, give the office a call. Um, 
Again, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, thank you for watching. Uh, I've been your host, uh, Dr. Thomas Kisslin, joined by Dr. James Diem, and you're watching I Care Today. We'll see you next time.